Women Taking the Lead, episode 130. So I think it's just knowing, believing in your gut, because that's the best answer. You know, it's like, believe in your gut, practice what you preach, and, and, you know, just know that you know and have faith in yourself that you will make your best decision. You don't, no one is going to guide you into some rainbows and unicorns. It all comes from you. If it feels right, it feels right. And when it doesn't feel right, get out of there. Don't stay too long at the farm. Hello, my name is Jody Flynn and welcome to Women Taking the Lead, where we are all about creating blasts of inspiration to help you overcome self-doubt so you can lead with confidence, integrity, and a sense of humor. Head over to womentl.com forward slash recognize to reserve your spot in our upcoming webinar on how to be recognized and rewarded for the work you do. Now, your future awaits, so let's get started. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. I'm here with Sharon Haver, who teaches everyday women to look like they're worth it so they can create a relevant, authentic, modern image to earn and deserve six-figure paydays. Halfway through Sharon's three-decade career in style, she left the lure of being a New York fashion stylist, working with top models and actresses on photo shoots, to helping working women make the most of what they've got. She founded FocusOnStyle.com in 1999, and although her impressive resume looks like a who's who of media household names, her heart is with helping entrepreneurs refine their chick style to confidently pull their look together with ease. Sharon, that's just a little intro for every one. So tell us a little bit more about you and your own beginnings. Oh, well, actually, I have a funny background because I kind of call myself a two-headed monster because I'm equally versed in business as I am in style. And part of it was when I was a little kid, we didn't come from great means. We didn't have a lot of money, but we. my mother taught me from the time I was tiny that you needed to look like you were worth it, like you were relevant. So I had to figure out how to make it happen. And I figured it out kind of when most kids went to summer camp, I went to Lowman's, which was this big designer discount place with my mom when I was a kid. And I learned to pull out the really good garments off a mixed up rack and they had all their labels cut out so I could recognize things by threads so that I could find these super duper designer clothes and look good and they were crazy ridiculously cheap and I was a chubby kid and I felt confident and at ease because I was wearing these great clothes. So that started me wanting to really go into fashion and at that point my mother as I got older, pretty much said, there's no, no kid of mine is going to be in fashion. Sorry, you need a real concrete background, no fashion for you. So I started out, I got a degree in a business degree and a major in marketing. And I managed to continue what I call my two headed monsterness of just being equally adverse in fashion and style as I am in, in business and marketing. And that's how I've been able to be an entrepreneur for as long as I have, because it really is a little of this and a little of that every day. But I owe everything to my mom's perseverance to finding the best that we can on the budget we had. And for Lowman's for providing all those really great clothes, crazy <laughs> cheap. <laughs> Nice. And you know, I found that people who have some versatility in two different areas can often make a really fabulous career by blending the two or three or whatever it is. Rarely does pivoting in our career hurt us. It usually always comes together. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And I know now if they kind of coin the phrase, you know, multi-passionate, it's it's like, it's not my favorite phrase, but I I totally understand. I don't know. It's maybe multi interested you know (laughs) yeah yeah no I totally get that because I have my coaching I obviously have the podcasting now and the marketing for my own business I often tell people if I wasn't in coaching I'd probably be in marketing because it's so fascinating to me yeah and I actually have this crazy little minor in like abnormal psych and laws so it kind of all creates this like weird (laughs) this weird little interesting thing but you know without you know understanding someone's psyche and you know making sure that you know things are right the law part Mm -hmm. it all it all comes together and it also helps understand people a little bit better also Absolutely. And Sherrod, you've come a long way. You've had success in your life and you've definitely gained confidence. But take us back to a time when you were playing small, right? When you didn't realize how capable you were. And it it was probably not until later 
in life or weeks, months, years later that you looked back and thought, oh my goodness, I could have done so much more and just totally undervalued myself. Share with us the story and the lessons you've learned. Well, I think it goes two different ways. One is it started really young when I was um, sort of like a, I guess, a step above an intern, a step below an assistant. And oddly enough, I worked at a plastics magazine. That Could you believe it? Me, I had a, worked at a plastics trade magazine in the marketing department. And I went there and I was hired. And it was like a pretty cool job for, you know, a kid in school. And I walked in wearing one of my, you know, Calvin Klein outfits from Lomans. <laughs> and <laughs> I remember, and I got hired, hearing this voice on the other side of the, the cubicle saying, she's never going to work. She's too pretty. She don't hire her. And it was like the Wicked Witch of the West. And I'm like, whoa. And it made me realize, this woman, that I, I always had to try to prove myself to everyone. Like, you know, no, I'm not the girl who's cute. I'm the girl who's smart and can do anything. And I think in a sense that almost has held me back on one end and pushed me forward at the same way, because I always have this urge to want to do it myself, that I can do it. I can prove it. And I can get, as I got further and further in business, one of the things that really held me back is that I would, I want to do everything myself, you know, and I can, I can multitask business. I can multitask style. I can do my own design. I can do my own photos. I don't need a marketing business coach. I have a marketing background. So it took me, I, and I do everything so easily and naturally that I kind of take myself for granted that way until I finally realized that if I didn't start staffing more, if I didn't invest in the best business coach I could, if I didn't invest in someone who had what I wanted, I was going to stay in exactly the same place. And it, that was a really big bite for me to chew off. And when I realized that, I was like, I'm doing it gung-ho and I never look back. But making that connection to actually pivot to making the change that I, I need a mentor too, we all do. That was, that was so monumental and, and just shifting the way I look at business and, and the way my life is. Sharon, I'm so glad you shared that because that is so huge. And I think a lot of us bump up against that and we don't know how to name it. And I read a great book um, called What Got You Here Won't Get You There, right? And sometimes we lean on our strengths too much and we can't break through to the next level. Yeah. You know, we plateau in our careers, in our businesses, when we're not able to start delegating and start building a team because we're so good at what we do that we can't possibly be replaced. Exactly. And, and good for you. And at the same token, and this, I tell all these business owners who I work with, I'm like, don't play, don't go dumb blonde on your business. Like, don't say, oh, I can't do this and give it to someone else. You should know how to do everything in your business. That doesn't mean you have to do it. That just means you have to know that it's done the way you want to. And you have to be able to oversee things quickly. And so when you do have your own small business, you should learn how to like do the back end. You should know how to code. You should know how to do a quick design. That doesn't mean you have to do it. You just need to know you know, are the people who are working for me doing it correctly, doing it on task? Is it the right time? Is it the right way? And, and you know, and what happens if, if someone's sick and they can't come in that day and no one else can do it? Or just go in and do it yourself. But that doesn't mean you need to every day. Just understanding. Yes, I love that. Now, Sharon, share with us a time in your journey when you had a wake-up call. It could have been a light bulb going off in a moment, or it could have been a buildup over time of like su something starting to dawn on you. But take us back to the moment and share with us the steps that you took that led to your success. Oh, that would be easy. I think the moment was when I was working like seven days a week, 15 hours a day, <laughs> <laughs> and I, that's not a light bulb moment that's a breakdown that's a, that's a meltdown <laughs> and I realized that I the girl who was the most horrific typist in the world they should have failed me in typing and done me a favor was now my own best secretary and that I was and I and, and mean these in a small business these days happen here and there and that I was basically doing all the grunt work that would just prevent me from doing my work and it just kept building up and building up and I thought it was someone was doing it and they weren't and it was like I just kept doing it and doing it and slowly but surely I'm like this has got to stop you know I have got to hire people who are responsible 
and who can do their job. And it is, I mean, I'm sure, you know, if you have a virtual staff, it's hard to find virtual people who, you know, they're there for you. They, they, it's a beautiful day. It's like, they go out. It's like, you know, we have a, I have a vacation place out in Wyoming and it's like, go, go get something fixed on a good powder day. You know, you can't find anyone there. And it's kind of the same thing with a virtual staff. So you need to really hone in on people who have integrity and who, who go out and do it. And I think by having the accountability of being in, of having a business coach or being in an advanced high level program that is costing you a lot of money, it keeps you nose to the grind to get things done because you've got to live up for yourself and your expectations. So you've got to keep moving ahead and forging ahead. Yeah. There's a lot of accountability there to get, keep you moving. Yeah, totally. I love it. And Sharon, what I want everyone to get is there is no one way to lead because we all have different personalities. We all play to different strengths where our leadership styles are going to differ. And this is actually a good thing and we can all balance and round each other out, but it's important first to identify what our own style is and what works for us and the people around us. So Sharon, how would you describe your leadership style? Uh, pretty straightforward. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much to the point. It's kind of the same in, in when it comes to me for people's dress, for people's personal style, for my business style. I mean, I'm not much of a pussyfooter. And I'm not a shrinking violet when it comes to my business or when someone's working for me. Pretty much straightforward. And if I, I, you know, I practice what I preach. If I can do it, you can do it. No divas. You know, it's like, please don't be a diva. I'm not a diva. If I could, you know, and it comes from when I was a stylist. You know, people think being a stylist on photo shoots is so glamorous. But there's tons of grunt work. You know, you got to go steam those clothes, haul those clothes, pick them up, schlep them around, get them in the suitcases, get them in location. It's like, it's a lot of blood, sweat, and tears where people you know, now think everyone's walking around in stilettos on a photo shoot looking gorgeous, but it's a lot of, you know, manual labor too. Besides that, if I can do it, I certainly want my assistants to be able to haul the bag. So it's the same thing with my business. If, if you know, don't say, I just had someone who's like, I hate, I hate editing from a transcription. It's like, well, that's great because it's your job and so do I. But you know, if I have to do it once in a while, you need to do it once in a while. It's just straightforward. If I do it, you do it. Practice what I preach, you know, and mm -hmm. it's just, and don't, you know, and, and don't pussyfoot. It just wastes time. It really does. I was just thinking that when you have a lot going on and there are a lot of plates spinning, right, that need your attention, direct communication is so needed. So and I can think, yeah, I can think of four examples where I assume something, another person, just in the past week, where I was like, ah, uh, I think this is, we're on the same page. And we weren't, right? Because it wasn't like, boom, you know, there's this fear, I think, as women, we have that if we're very direct, we're going to be perceived as being yeah. pushy or that we're trying to get things our way. When in reality, oftentimes when I find myself being very direct, I'm not trying to be pushy. I'm trying to say, is this what we're doing? Yeah. And I think the funny thing is about getting, as you get older, I think it's easier for me to be direct now. And I don't get the <laughs> same reaction as much as when I did when I was, let's say, in my twenties yeah. or thirties, when people would be like, <gasps> she She's right. like she said it. And and the other thing is I think people lose so much communication because they don't talk to each other between all this email and base camp and this and Asana and Trellos and boards and this and finding yourself typing out notes to tell the person tomorrow. It's like pick up the phone and tell me what you mean. And I mean, like, okay, you get it. What do you think? And if they're not answering me in the way you went, you know, they didn't have it. You know, you could look at the computer screen together, but I think it's all that the typing is supposed to be saving us time. Instead, it's creating like a flow, you know, a whole, it's like a whole big round pile of, of, sort of virtual garbage of virtual paper and it's just it's just easy to like pick up the phone and say hey you get it what do you think it is okay cool bye thanks and it's done it's two seconds right right and knowing when to use which form of communication yeah. is best yep i love it and sharon what's one thing you're working on right now that you're really excited about I, this is when i'm really excited i pulled this one off i have it's kind of, i just did a really small little trickly preview to a few people and it's going to be coming out very soon it's my new book and it's called style word and it's fashion quotes for real style so you can inspire your best dressed self and what it is is 
before I was found at FocusOnStyle.com, when I transitioned from being a, a New York fashion stylist to being a web entrepreneur back in 99, in the middle, I had a uh, fashion advice column on the Scripps Howard Newswire, which went out to 400 papers. And I created that position for myself because I felt that the everyday woman really wasn't getting her Q&A advice the way she should for style. So it was kind of like a Dear Abby for fashion. And that was the platform that I built Focus on Style from. So what I did was, um, it's really, it's for, it's like, like the short attention span theater. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. for people who really want to get to the point of stylist advice. So it's the ultimate cheat sheet to upgrade your look in the shortest amount of time. And it's called Style Word, the book. And if you go to stylewordbook.com, Com. You can get on my wait list for it. And I also designed the book myself. I did all the photos and the headshots. I pretty much we shot all the photos inside of it because I really believe, again, if I can do it, you can do it. So not only in my leadership style, but in teaching people how to, how to dress themselves. If I can do it, you can do it. If I could do my own headshot photos, you don't need to hire a $5,000 photographer. If I know how to lay this out and you're an entrepreneur, you should know how to lay out the basic things. So, you know, I just try to set myself up as the example for other people to get motivated and, and follow because none of this stuff is really that difficult. You know, it's just, you kind of, kind of decide you can do it and do it and, you know, choose your weapons, which is the one you're going to follow through on and which is the one you will hire out on. I love it. All right, Sharon, now I'm going to do a quick leadership roundup. So tell us, what is one practice you have that helps to make you a better leader? I think a no diva zone. <laughs> oh, say more about that. Okay, I'm going to take the word quick out of this. <laughs> tell, me, tell me about the no deep zone. I, I think it's just, you know, if it's your business, be willing to get down and dirty and get what has to get done, done and not pass it off, not you know, not say I'm too important for this, not say it's not worth my time. Just know that if it's got to get done, it's got to get done and no screaming, no drama, no BS. Just do it. Learn how to do it. Sense. And if you do, what I really believe in, it's kind of my point of view, is if you do something every day, learn to do it right. Whether it be loading a blog to your WordPress site or getting dressed. If you do it every day, learn to do it right. It's not so hard. I love that. And what is one book that you would recommend to a woman to help her develop her leadership? Uh, I have one and I love her. We met on Twitter. We were Twitter friends talking about lipstick. And then I realized, oh my God, this insane woman has climbed the seven summits and she's a leadership speaker. <laughs> it's called On the Edge, The Art of High Impact Leadership by Alison Levine. And Alison actually climbed the seven summits. You know, She has this insanely impressive career. She did Everest twice. I mean, it's like, you, I, I get chills thinking about like Allison's athletic prowess. And she is, has a fantastic business back, background and a leadership background. She led the first women's team on, I think Everest. I don't, I don't want to get complicated. I don't know. A Allison just like, she's so amazingly just courageous and a leader. And I think that if you're going to look at someone to lead in whatever topic you're looking for, they should have actually not picked up a bunch of crib notes and spoke about it, but they should have actually, you know, walked their walk. And in her case, she, you know, led to the highest peaks and she led in business and she led at, um, West Point. She was a mm -hmm. adjunct there. I, I just, she's incredible and it's funny and she's smart and she wears great lipstick and high heels. So, you know, Hey, I'm not going <laughs> to climb Everest, but we could talk shoes on Twitter. So. <laughs> I think, you know, I think I've seen her TED Talk. I believe she has a TED Talk. And if it's not a TED Talk, yeah. she's definitely presented. Yeah, and she's very funny. Yes, and tells great stories. Yeah. So she's worth, definitely worth checking out. I mean, she was already, but, you know, for those of you who prefer watching TED Talks over books, you can find her TED Talk, but then go read her book. Yeah. Awesome. I, and, and I have another book. I, I hope I don't screw up the name of it, but it's actually my business coach's book. And it's the way you do everything is the way you do anything. Or maybe it's the way you do anything is the way you do everything. One or the other. And it's by Suzanne Evans. And it's great because it's true. No matter what you do, it's the same way. The, way. the way you like talk to your staff, the way you talk to the waiter, same way you're running your business. You know, it's all, the, it's the same thing about you. And it's a mm -hmm. really cool business book. Yeah. I love that message. It's one of my favorite topics is a, a paying attention to the small, the way we do small things. Absolutely. 
because it's it's what bleeds into and it's also what creates the perception out in the world. It's the things we usually don't pay attention to or give a lot of thought to that actually send the message mm-hmm. to other people of who we are. Absolutely. And you know a lot about this because you you deal in image yeah. and style and how you pr- how women present themselves out to the world. It's the subtle little things that people not to stress people out and thinking they gotta you know what? agonize over every little detail, but it's usually the stuff you're not paying attention to that people pick up on. Yeah, I mean, it's just what you know. Depending on who you talk to, it's you make a first impression either in five or seven seconds. So if you walk into a room as a businesswoman and it's a meeting and you look like you're 1982 yearbook photo and you're wearing wire rim glasses and you have a horrible old fashioned haircut and you're wearing like really frumpy clothes and comfortable shoes. I mean, I kind of say this three, three style checks and it's like hair, glasses and shoes. Like if you were in comfortable schleppy looking shoes, unless you've got a foot issue and I'm married to a podiatrist and have have had broken ankles, sprained foot and foot surgery. So I know from walking cats, you know, so unless mm-hmm. you really have a foot issue, there's no reason to be wearing schleppy shoes because someone looks at your bad footwear and they're like she's lazy she can't even wear a decent pair of proper shoes and you know you've got a bad old haircut and they're like well she's not relevant she hasn't changed her hair in the last 20 years 30 years who knows with some of them some of them it could be 40 years they're really bad and the same thing with like really you know frumpy wireless glasses or you know readers it's like well she's she's not relevant she's old and if you're working with millennials you don't you just want to be the chic woman who's ageless you don't want to be the woman who's like oh there's the old lady and that you know the little plastic readers. So I think people don't realize how, you know, the signals that little things like that send out. Right. And especially because, you know, we, we've met these women, their, their expertise is incredibly relevant. You know, they have valuable, valuable content to give, but because they're not paying attention to how they present themselves, people are saying, well, their content can't be very good. Absolutely. Like, why would I, why would I want to spend money on someone if they just don't look like they're worth it? I mean, I think it's so easy to learn how to create a relevant, authentic and modern personal image. So you can earn and deserve a six figure payday. It's not, you know, how can you ask for the sale and ask for, you know, big bucks When you look lazy and dated, why would somebody believe that you have the wherewithal to to be who you say you are unless you at least look modern and, and relevant? Right. And, you know, for those of you who are listening, because I know some people are going to the extent of like, well, I'm not going to wear high heel shoes and I can't wear, you know, like thousand dollars you dip right. You don't have to like there's definitely ways to do this to make it individualized, to make it comfortable without making it look too comfortable. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, remember, I learned everything from the floor of Lowman's with labels ripped out. You know, I like good quality clothes, but I don't like paying high end designer retail prices. You know, there's a will, there's a way there's also goodwill. You know, you could find right. designer clothes there. It doesn't matter. I've had, I'm like a thrift shop queen of finding like really cool old designer stuff there. It's, it's keeping yourself inspired, keeping your eyes open. And that's kind of what I try to teach my ladies in the say she crash course, because Because for me, chic is being confident, harmonious, interesting, and classic. And if you're buying classic pieces, you don't need to buy them a top dollar in season. You could buy them in the last five years on the sale rack. You know, they're classic, but they're modern classic. And that just says a lot about you. So you need to not have someone dress you, not sell out your style, but stay authentic to yourself and learn how to be your own best stylist. And a lot of it just comes from, you know, Stop shortchanging yourself. Stop stepping on your own toes and and realize that if you spend all this money on marketing and you spend all this money on personal development, that you are your brand and you need to, when people see you, you've got to stand proud and and look relevant. Love it. And Sharon, what advice would you give your younger self? That. (laughs) (laughs) Capture the last five minutes. Not to to listen to the woman in the other side of the cubicle and prove to yourself, you know, because she's bitter and miserable. And as a matter of fact, when I I was thinking about that not that long ago, I looked her up. And um, God bless Google. It's like, "Mm, she aged looking like the woman she is, you know. (laughs) That's kind of funny. So I think it's just knowing, believing in your gut, because that's the best answer. You know, it's like, believe in your gut, practice what you preach. And, and, you know, just 
know that you know and have faith in yourself that you will make your best decision. You don't, no one is going to guide you into some rainbows and unicorns. It all comes from you. If it feels right, it feels right. And when it doesn't feel right, get out of there. Don't stay too long at the farm. <laughs> Amen. All right, Sharon, now share with us a success quote or a mantra and why it has meaning for you. Okay. And you knew it was going to involve shoes, right? <laughs> so I didn't doubt it. <laughs> my favorite topic, <laughs> shoes. If the shoe doesn't fit, must we change the foot by Gloria Steinem? And I think it means a lot because it's like, just be you, you know, just if it doesn't fit, just continue to be you in the world and make it your own unique way. Don't try to be someone else. Don't try to be a copycat. Don't try to cookie cutter someone else's business. Just do what's right for you. And don't be afraid to let yourself go and don't hold yourself back. And lastly, Sharon, what is the best way for this community to connect with you? The best way would be to my website, which is focusonstyle.com. And um, if you go to focusonstyle.com forward slash passport, I have a free little gift there of Passport to French Chic. It's a little book that's coming out that you can get right away. And that will also get you in to the wait list for my style word book that's coming out really soon. So focusonstyle.com forward slash passport. Like the kind of thing you, you know, with the ugly photo of you that you take to the airport. <laughs> that you use for international travel. Right. <laughs> Love. And for those of you out for your run or driving in the car, don't worry. You can find all the links and resources shared in this episode at womentakingthelead.com. And Sharon, thank you so much for taking the time to inspire and enlighten us. We are all better for having met you. Oh, thank you, Jody, And thank you for having me. You have such a fantastic show. You really do. Thank you for joining me on Women Taking the Lead. Are you ready to take the lead in your own life? Head over to womentl.com forward slash recognized to reserve your spot in my upcoming webinar on how to be recognized and rewarded for the work that you do. And to strengthen you on your leadership journey, I'd like to send you off with a quote from Marianne Williamson. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine, as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It's not just in some of us, it's in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. Again, thank you for joining with me, and here's to your success.